but we are talking about something called a spillover effect. Actually, the spillover effect simply is how the technology transfer to host country and how the people of the country benefit from the foreign direct in investment in developing their skills. Uh, and this is a positive dimension of productivity, which is sustainability of technological progress. Uh, in fact, in productivity, we have two types of productivity. One is input driven, can't use input to produce output. With no technological progress, there is no spillover effect. And one is productivity driven, the spillover effect of transfer of technology is, and, uh, is very high, and also human capital development skills development is very high. And a case is about very interesting country. We have 12 countries, ASEAN 5, and then we have uh, East Asian countries, China, Korea, and Japan. And you have big countries competing for foreign direct investment is India. And in Pacific area, we have uh, Australia and New Zealand. Both are resource-based industries, resource-based countries. Australia and New Zealand, they are resource-based countries. Okay, so the, through the globalization actually, and internalization and trade, uh, the multinational companies, those were born very small companies like Japanese companies uh, associated to individual names such as Sony, Panasonic, Suzuki, they were from home to factory, to multinational, uh, multinational company. Uh, they went to East Asian countries for different reasons, actually. One is political stability and availability of the resources and uh, cheap cost of production. Okay. So these are multinational companies uh, in, uh, going abroad, mainly are Japanese, Koreans, and some American and uh, European countries, uh, companies, Hong Kong and Taiwan, and somehow Singapore. So we have something very important. We call it total factor productivity. Total factor productivity actually is a combined contribution of the quality of inputs. It's not the input itself, not as the capital or labor or material. It's the quality of capital. How is the technology? It's the quality of uh, uh, human capital or labor is the quality of the resources. So the total factor productivity actually is the indicator of technological progress, which is the indicator of a spillover effect. And this is will show the country has technological progress or has no technological progress or input driven or productivity driven. So the sustainability dimension here is uh, relying on how is the total factor productivity? How is the quality of input used in production and how this generated high quality output both in quantity and quality? And this is will show, you, will show the spillover effect of the investment. Here we have something very interesting. Uh, actually, if you go back to the history, uh, the economic evolution is starting with hunting and gathering when the people are very primitive and then there is a knowledge developed during the hunting and gathering and people from being mobile people moving from area to area they stay and then it came the agricultural revolution and then the industrial revolution is introduced through the knowledge developed in the agricultural revolution in great britain in 17 and 18 century and then by 1990s, we have new economy, they call it information economy. It was based on information technology. After 2000, we have the knowledge-based economy, which is based on information and communication technology and human capital. And this is makes the difference between the countries. We have many countries in Africa and in Asia. They have huge resources, huge population, but the output is very low. Singapore is a very small country with no resources. It is a rich country in 
is Asia compared with Malaysia and Indonesia and Thailand? What is the difference? The difference is human capital, skill, and technology developed. This is case also applied to Japan. It's a poor country in resources, divided in the war. It has achieved the development only in 30 years. It took Great Britain 200 years to develop the industrialization and took America 70 years. In Japan, it's only 70 years, 30 years. Although it adapted the technology, but they show their own progress and their companies when, wherever. Besides the new uh, knowledge-based economy, we have something new economy. We call it bioeconomy. This is a special branch of knowledge-based economy. is based on biotechnology activities. Even U.S., they only have their blueprint in 2012. So the new direction now is realigning in bioeconomy. I have talked about total factor productivity. I already, ex uh, already explained it as the technological progress. The country with technological progress, we call it productivity driven. In East Asia, we have only two countries showing productivity driven, uh, uh, Korea and Japan and somehow China. Uh, the first speaker talk about China, why people go to the China actually is not the uh, the cheap production is the human skills. And I can give you the evidence. Why Apple Macintosh produced the iPhone in China? Why not in Malaysia? Why not in Thailand? Because the Chinese, they know how to do the job. Not only the, uh, the cheap cost, is the human skills. Why China is leading the foreign indirect investment? Because of the human skills. So there is a very positive aspect of China. And maybe the political system, you don't like it because it's a central political system, but the economic side, Chinese human skill attracted the foreign direct investment to China and now is the number one in attracting the foreign direct investment because of the human skills. So China is the way to be productivity driven. The rest of East Asian countries are input driven. If you want to compare Australia and New Zealand, although they are advanced, but they are based on resources. They have huge resources. India is on the way to attract the foreign direct investment for different reasons also, maybe the human skills also, and uh, keep cost of production. So in East Asia only we have two countries who are the productivity driven, and most of them are input driven, and China is in between. So the objective of this study is to examine the impact of foreign direct investment, a spillover effect how we are going to achieve sustainable development in its positive way. Why Soviet Union collapsed? Because Soviet Union combined many countries with huge resources. They built very good and big country, but it collapsed with the lack of technological progress. It did not achieve technological progress, then collapsed in 1990s. And the specific objective to identify the factors determining output labor capital productivity and total factor productivity contribution to these selected countries in Asia Pacific and to investigate whether if the I spill over effect in Asia Pacific is input driven or productivity driven as I have explained before. Actually is the framework. Maybe some people they are not from this background. This is the framework. If you look here, we have the output and we have TAP. What is the difference between two? And these are the factors of production. Output is input to produce output, which is the GDP, whatever. TAP is a technological progress. is based on the quality of the inputs, not the quantity. It's the quality. Quality of capital, quality of technology, quality of human capital. So those who have high total factor productivity, like Japan, we call them productivity driven. Those who have low uh, total factor productivity and high input, uh, like East Asian countries, we call them input driven. So this is the difference between the countries. And this is actually a mathematical model showing how we generate the data. We have two steps, estimation and calculation. And I think some of you, like Borofonot, maybe has no relation with mathematics. But the whole story is about 
who is input driven and who is productivity driven in the end. <laughs> so, so the main findings is uh, the results is mixed. Most of the countries are achieving their development through output and few countries they have uh, technological progress. I give example of Japan and Ch uh, Korea and somehow is China. How we know this? Look to the Japanese companies and Korean companies and their product, electronic, automobile, mobile phones, whatever. They are leading everywhere. Look to the quality and look to the consumer confidence in Japanese and Korean product actually. This showing you this product is gone through technological progress. So the implication is the most important is the knowledge. And this knowledge is combined in human mind, we call it human capital, that should be gained through the foreign direct investment to develop the skill of the people and technological progress to transfer the technology to the local companies. If the country succeed to transfer the technology and upgrade their human capital skills, is going to be productivity driven and sustain in the future and achieve sustainable productivity and will not collapse as happened in Soviet Union. Okay? The most important factor is something called social capital. Social capital. We have human capital and we have social capital and we have intellectual capital. So the social capital is very important. Why also is Asian they succeed? and uh, Europe countries, they are struggling. The secret is the social capital creation is very high in East Asia, not in human relation. We have very good social capital in, in Sudan. The human relation is very strong, but this is not in productive way. So the interaction between excellent association, excellent association between the people who are working in the same organization, and different interpersonal skills will make the difference. So the interaction of excellent association and interpersonal skills will make the difference and create the technological progress. We call this social capital, which is very high in Japan and Korea and China and in East Asia in general. And this is the secret behind their development sustain and they are leading now thank you very much for attention <laughs>